you know, rolling through the streets in the middle of the night uh, is something I always would like to kind of express, you know, that feeling of it being a nocturnal beast just out there roaming, roaming the streets, looking for its prey. I like driving this car through tunnels sometimes because the sound is just amazing. You know, it's, it has a 2J in it and it sounds very unique, but the way it was built put together, a special type of exhaust that I built on it, uh, it really brings out these high tones. Driving through a tunnel with those lights passing you by and just hearing to that sound, it's a special occasion every time it happens. I've had a Supra for uh, 14 years or so, and I've worked the 2Js for a very long time. Uh, built the one that's in my current car, uh, it's doing very well. So working on those motors, to me, the fact that I know how to work on them makes it easy for me to maintain a car. 2JZs are turning into almost folklore. That these motors, 300 horsepower more or less, uh, stock. The fact that you can create so much more power, seven to 800 horsepower, two of the wheels on a motor that you don't have to open it up and it will last for a long time. I think that is a testament to the engineering of that motor. By sheer luck, this car was available, blue, not the M. So I thought, okay, that's a challenge. It had problems with it, so I got it for real cheap up in Connecticut. I went, I bought it, drove it home, and immediately the gear started turning. What if I put a 2J swap in it? Why? Because I've worked with 2Js for, what, 16 years, so I know them rinse that out. I went to a local junkyard here that imports 2JZ motors from Japan. I decided to just buy one that day, and uh, within the next week, the motor from this car was out of the car. And I thought, all right, challenge accepted. I'm gonna do something no one has ever done. <laughs> the reason really why I wanted to do it is because I wanted that 2JZ power and reliability, but in a car that is great at the road course. The chassis is one of the stiffest ever made. So a perfect combination. The big question in my mind was, will it fit? And will the drivetrain be able to handle it? So I took my chances. The swap uh, went pretty smooth, other than the wiring, which was the most difficult part because I had to manage schematics for the BMW Z4, which are mostly in German, and the schematics for the 2J wiring, uh, which was, you know, some of it was in Japanese. Some of the challenges I had with this swap were that this is a non-return fuel system. So the fuel comes to the fuel rail, does not go back to the tank like it does on the Super and all the other cars I used to work on. So I had to find out ways to make it work here. So it is running a returnless fuel system, which is the new thing. The other one was a throttle body. This car comes with a drive-by wire, where the, Z, uh, the 2JZ is a uh, regular uh, wired throttle uh, system. Other than that, everything kind of fit, which is a surprise to me. The motor fit. The transmission is the stock Z4 six-speed. Uh, that not only fit, obviously I have a custom plate that attaches the transmission to the motor, but the drive shaft was just the right length. I didn't really touch anything in the back end of the car. Last I dynoed it was 560 and change, 565 to the wheels. It's a lot of power, but it feels like an OEM car. Um, everything works. All the electronics work. Uh, all the gauges work, there are no lights, you know, the car just felt like it came from a factory like this. Since I was a kid, I've always liked cars. I remember playing with these little cars uh, in, on my floor, uh, I must have been 10 years old or so. But I wouldn't play with them like normal people would, you know, driving them around and banging them and all that. I would actually move them onto some location on my table and just look at them. You know, turn them around a little bit, look at them. 
I was like, that is cool. The, how do they design these things to look so great and they move? That's fantastic. So as I got older, I wanted to be a car designer. And uh, I found out quickly that those jobs are not easy to have. So then I moved on to being an auto mechanic. I mean, that's the best thing I could do. So I went to school for auto mechanic and I started changing tires at Sears. That didn't go too well because I felt, eh, this is boring. So I went back to college to do some other stuff. And ever since that, I've always had this passion to work on cars. As far as inspiration to getting to where I am, I kind of went my own way. You know, I was the, the oddball in the family, I think, where it wasn't a doctor, an engineer per se. Uh, even though I had the background now, in the past, it wasn't uh, that. I think it's really the, the people that I surrounded myself. I found this community, the culture, to be really supportive, where, you know, you work on your car, you go out to some meets, you go to some races, and you, and you see people that like the same thing you do, and they're commenting on your work, the, the pros and the cons. And that just motivates you to, you know, it's like you're inducted to this new family. Because this car is really easy to drive and very responsive, it lends itself to a good track car. It already was, even though the 3.0 SI uh, is not the M, it still has the chassis because it can put the power down. It's not an abrupt power delivery like most Supra high horsepower cars are. Uh, I've tuned it so that I get more of a linear torque rise. So coming off of the apex, when you start adding in the power, you can just gas it all the way, and it will inch you up there nicely. It really does not step out. This car has introduced me to a, another world of auto enthusiasts, which are the guys that are out there doing HPEs, road racing, and you get a sense of, hmm, maybe a thousand horsepower isn't as important as you thought it was. Tires, brakes, suspension, that is as important and driver. So it kind of got me into this realm of maybe I need to work on me driving the car and just don't worry about the power. So I'm kind of, my mindset is changing a lot with this car. What I try to keep with this car was uh, a very OEM look where if you pop open the engine, uh, the, the hood and you look at the engine, you may not even realize that it's a 2JZ. And at some shows, uh, I've had a lot of those uh, comments. But after a while they see the turbo, because sometimes they don't see it first, and they're like, oh, it has a turbo. He did a turbo uh, swap onto the uh, BMW motor. But then they look a little further and they see VVTI Toyota. Like, oh, wait a minute, this isn't normal. So it catches them by surprise. I put a TRD badge on the side of the car. TRD is Toyota Racing Development. Uh, there are high performance parts that Toyota uh, has for standard vehicles. And you kind of hear folks just look at your car and say, hey, that guy has a TRD badge, a fool. Uh, and then later on, uh, you know, when I have a car sitting there and the, the hood popped up, you see them coming around and they'll, you'll just hear them say, hey, this is the car with the TRD badge and they'll snicker and kind of laugh, but then they see what's in there and they say, oh, and now I see why he did that. What's the most rewarding about this car to me is the feeling I get driving it, knowing I built it custom, learned a lot about how it works, and it's reliable and I can take it anywhere I want and abuse it, and it takes me back home. And I am anal when it comes to checking the car for its health. I'll take the spark plugs out almost every time I come home, read them to see how the engine's doing, they look great. Go into the car, look for oil leaks, looks great. I, everything is just holding up, thank goodness, but you get that feeling of accomplishment. You know, that you did something that uh, you don't see anywhere and that it holds up to the abuse.